Hello and welcome to RED's virtual cinematography series. I'm Nada Albright and I work with Filmmakers for RED. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with and speaking with cinematographer Mihai Malamari Jr. Mihai has worked with the director Taika Waititi on the critically acclaimed Jojo Rabbit. He also worked with the director P.T. Anderson on the award-winning film The Master. He is a member of the prestigious Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, and we are so excited we get to speak to him today about his collaboration with the director, James Samuels, on the Netflix unconventional Western, The Harder They Fall. Welcome, Mihai. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. One of the first things I want to talk to you about is your relationship with the director, James Samuels, and how you were brought onto the project and a little bit of that beginning story. Um, we. We had a we had a meeting then, and I remember thinking while we had that meeting, uh, like probably two minutes in the meeting, I was thinking that like we'll definitely get along, and he's such a fun person to work with and to be around. Yeah, um, it, it, it was quite amazing. I remember from the first meeting, he brought uh, some storyboards, like so many ideas, and and the script itself had so many music notes. Yeah. That was uh, it was quite amazing. Like I remember reading it and thinking, it's like, oh, like how can we fit so much music? Everything was great. So like, yeah. In my mind, I was like, how can we fit so much amazing music within the film? And uh, he did it. And <laughs> he, he had an amazing, it. Amazing. He had so. it in the script. He had all sorts of notes, and like I think music is such a big part of James's process that like every time, and and it's quite funny. I was thinking about it like. The way I work with steels and the way I use steels to 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 explain an idea because I think it's it's much easier than talking about something just like showing somebody an image and then you get a reaction right away. Yeah. The same way James works was like, oh, you gotta listen to this. What do you think? Or like watching dailies. I remember like he always has a guitar around. Like he always has really? a, like his phone. Like he will play some music for you and like you get an idea right away and you you know what what he wants to do. I understood that he also had some music uh, speakers on set. Oh yeah, all the time. Was that <laughs> yeah. for rehearsal? And it's or? great. I mean, it's like sometimes it's just for 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 a certain mood for for a scene, and it's like it, it's something that like everybody on set will understand right away instead yeah. of kind of. I mean, like it's the same way like storyboards will work or or shot lists like that you you give to the whole crew. Just playing music on set, it's, it does the same thing. Everybody like, got it, it. Gives everybody a certain vibe. And There's like, definitely a cohesion yeah. you can see with the cast. Yeah. Um, I think we actually have a picture of him right there uh, <laughs> with Idris looking very scary as Rufus Buck, <laughs> real life character, Western. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to your interview on the cinematography podcast, and you said that um, you said that you think music can be, I think you just answered this, but even more straightforward than language. So that's what you mean by just. You hear it and you understand and you're able to move on. Yeah, it has it has a, a, a great quality of communicating emotions right away. I think in in the same in the same way uh, a still photography or a painting. Yeah, that was my next question. You said you wanted the harder they fall to look like a photograph taken with an old lens but printed on high gloss paper. That that actually came from James because I remember talking about about. Um, redwood specific like, and, and talking about contrast and about and he was like I really like like glossiness like I really like like a glossy print type of feeling and that was that was kind of the yeah. the idea around it but but like overall I, re I remember because we, we we did quite a lot on on set and like with with the help of uh, our amazing DIT Eli Berg um, that I've, I've been collaborating with for the last 12 years. Oh, terrific. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Um, but I remember tweaking things on set and, and uh, it, it was all, always like I could hear James, like a little more glossiness, a little more gloss for, for the... So how do you, how do you get gloss? Like, is that I mean, lensing or contrast the filters? With, with everything, with lighting, with, okay. with like a certain type of, of contrast and, and uh, you have so many tools that, yeah. that, that, that you can, you can use for, for that. 
but you know the look. Well, tell me a little bit about your uh, visual inspirations going into it. And um, you were saying there were some artists that you were looking at. It was. I mean, uh, one of the things James brought was Kadir Nelson. And he's such an amazing painter. And, and like one thing that st struck me right away was the color saturation. And, and that's what, what James brought uh, to the table in the first meeting. Uh, he told me like I, I don't want to I don't want to have like a dusty westerny look mm. we want to we want to get like really bold with with colors and um, the, those were perfect examples and actually the the horse one it was so interesting because we knew right away that's that's Trudy on the on the horse on the train track mm. and <laughs> I remember like everybody uh, had that that image and we're looking on our phones it's like for 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 this painting and it's like okay the, the horse needs to go a little bit <laughs> to the right yeah. or to the left just to match this as much as possible um yeah this was one this was definitely one of the images that that james had in mind and he showed it to everybody as we, we spoke about it for for a long time that's a great scene uh and then your other uh peter uh how do you say his last name uh peter hanket i think uh, this was a very interesting um, thing because I, I'm trying, I mean, it's, sometimes I do, but I'm, I'm trying as much as possible to stay away from, from using visual references from, from other movies. And um, the main reason uh, that I like, I, I like stills and, and paintings because they were meant to, to be looked at for hours, where like some, some frames from, from movies, they, they, they can have that quality sometimes, but most of the times they were made to work in conjunction with other images. So um, that's the main reason I love using paintings and, and stills as, as references. And um, I remember we had, and everybody, the art department and costumes, and we all had the, the, the references from, from James um, Kadir Nelson's paintings, but I was trying to find something like, like like a steel uh, photograph that that will have the same qualities, mm -hmm. and I was struggling. I mean, I, I I searched so for so many weeks. I remember, and uh, interestingly enough, one thing I do when when I when I shoot out of town, uh, I'm trying to find a local bookstore and yeah. just go there. And like, even if I know I can buy those books cheaper online, I always make a thing of of buying yeah. <laughs> at least one book. I want to buy book. that one too. <laughs> And then I think it's a it's an interesting way. The, the bookstores are so amazing. Like you want to support them. So, and it paid off so well because this is a book I I, I would I don't know if I would have uh, find online. Uh, I had no idea about it. And I, like I remember, what's it called again? It, it's called Congo Tales, and it was in a corner somewhere on an upper shelf. It's it's a pretty big book, but I remember looking for for totally different thing and then I saw I, I, I saw that and I as soon as I opened it I was like oh my god this is it this is our our main reference what a for, for great lighting feeling. and for everything and I, I I remember taking it and like driving to to James and and show it to him and he was like yeah that's perfect wonderful so uh, what we did which um, it helped us a lot. Um, we, we picked a few images from from Congo Tales and a few from from Kadir Nelson, and um, we loaded that in our DIT station, so so our DIT oh. would reference them right away. And wow, uh, one of the ideas that we got from from Congo Tales was uh, going pretty pretty blue in the shadows, and and that kind of gave us that like it was one of the tools that helped us with that gloss that James was talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think that especially with these long, wonderful shots of Jonathan Majors as Nat Love, um, I, it, it's like looking at a photo book. You, you allow us to really look at him a long time. Yeah, one, one, one thing that we I, I always try to, and, and that's why working with, with Eli uh, as our DIT for so long, it, it helped. Uh, I always try to to get as close to the look we want in the dailies, um, and I think it's really important because if you think about it, you'll have the director and the editor look at that footage for months, and and yeah. you wanna you wanna have something that it's at least a starting point for sure. for the DI. And um, 
that's why we're also happy when we when we discover that um, way of creating the glossiness that, that mm -hmm. James wanted. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think it's I think it's really important that that your dailies look as as good as possible. Yeah, I think so too. So we're, we're going to watch a series of clips today, and the first one is we're going to run it through with sound, so we we get to see you know exactly um, the intent of the scene and all the drama that goes with it, and then we're going to run it again without sound, so you can talk a little bit about the behind the scenes and and some of your techniques. The first one we're going to run is this beautiful scene with uh, the camera going to Nat Love. So let's run that. Love that. I mean, he, this is towards the end of the movie. It's a movie about revenge. And here he is. So we're going to run it again. And this time, tell us a little bit about what's going on with this system. How'd you get that shot? Uh, it, it was a very long uh, cable cam. And uh, uh, it, it's one of those that it, it's so great to work with directors that, that push you <laughs> as much as possible. Uh, and and James had this idea. He, he he wanted to to start all the way in the in the office and go through the whole street, ending in a close up. And um, we uh, we we used uh, our our C camera, the Red Monstro, with the lightweight zoom. Um, it was a 24 to 68 um, because not only that you you had to cover all this all this distance, but you would have to start wide and end on a longer lens. So um, there was a perfect combination starting at a 24 in, in the office and, and um, going all the way, sneaking a, a zoom while the camera was moving on the cable cam and ending up into like all, all the way in into a 68. Uh, and of course, there was a lot of VFX because we had to, to remove the main window of the mirrors mansion mm -hmm. and we, we had two big cranes and on each side of the street. So um, um, the cable was running actually through the mansion and um, there was another crane at the, um, in the back of the church. So um, it, it was, the cable cam is such an amazing tool and you, you, can, um, you can do a lot of things with it. It's just that it, need, they, it will need a lot of time. Like you need, yeah few days to rig it you need rehearsals you need like we everything have, there needs it is. To, yeah. yeah so so this is kind of how it looked and it was towards the end of the day i remember we were actually shooting um the train scene which was very close to to this location and we um we moved like for the last hour and a half of the day to to get this shot it's a big day it was a big day and also <laughs> amazingly we we got it in six takes like the the we were losing the sun but uh, if you think about it there are so many things that can go wrong uh, in a situation like this and amazingly the only thing that that went wrong and made us shooting six takes was the fact that we were losing we had like wi-fi and rf interference oh. so our focus for sean mayer was uh like 
there was one point towards the end when he was losing control entirely and we're trying to figure out mm. that, like now we, we control our lights with Wi-Fi there is so much interference on a, on a movie set and we're starting to turn everything off that we didn't need just to make sure yeah. <laughs> we, and we, we got yeah. it in the end there was uh, just gaming in, the, in some saloon <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now we have a, 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 a BTS video, which is pretty cool. Um, let's run this. It requires so a lot of coordination, a lot of teamwork, like like every everything else. Yeah. But uh, it, it is an amazing tool, and like when you when you when you use it, uh, having something in mind, like like James had this shot, it, it's perfect. You know, you said that you like to push things as much as possible, and um, why do you like to try new things? And you know, uh, I mean. Uh, I think one of my biggest fears is to 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 be put in a box and to uh, it, it, it's kind of interesting. But I do enjoy doing new things for for every project. Uh, but I do enjoy also working with directors that will push you and will 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 make you uh, take risks and and find new things that you never thought about. Tell me about using the Panavision DXL2 and your large format. And I read with the Monstro sensor that you talked a little bit about in an interview, the difference in capturing 14 millimeter on Super 35 with 24 millimeter at full frame. Um, it's, it's something that it's uh, intrigued me with, uh, with, with still photography as well when, when, when shooting medium format or, or larger than, um, than Super 35 and, um, the the main the the main difference is, and especially when you are when you are um, shooting interiors, is that uh, you would have the same field of view with less distortion, and that that is actually it's closer to our um, perception. It's it's huh. closer to our to the way our eyes are seeing. Um, and and I th I think that's a huge advantage because a lot of times. Um, you even if you have the lenses on Super 35, um, you're looking through a 14, and it's like, nah, it's too wide, it's strange. But if you look through a 24 on 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 a larger format, um, it's quite pleasant. And uh, yeah, it's not about the field of view; it's about distortion, I think, more than than anything else. We have uh, some behind the scenes of there. There you are. Uh, that that is um going through the through the storyboards and and through the ideas we had uh, our sharpshooter on the top of the mansion and we had the, his pov in, in in a couple shots and and one thing that that always um bothered me is uh, the pov through a cope it's always done with a long lens and in post yeah. you you add black around it and then you add the crosshairs and I remember telling James that I want to try something where like it's actually closer to reality because when you look through a scope you never see black around you like you see some other like yeah. out of focus image and yeah. working with our our prop master I remember he brought me like four or five different scopes and um amazingly we end up using the the one that was period accurate I think it's like an 18 to really? scope that's why that long thing in the other picture is is the real scope it was mounted on on long rods from one of our zooms and by using a tilt and shift lens we were able to focus on on the image that that scope created um and it didn't need any other um post work because the the crosshairs inside were period accurate the image was quite sharp it was actually way sharper than than i thought will it would be but uh, we loved that shot so much like i i think it got used 10 10 times in the final edit. <laughs> it's really good, especially towards the end. Um, and then we've just got a couple of other pictures we can go through. It looks like you use the remotes a lot. 
we we did i mean this was uh, um, trying to to figure out a way to um, to follow everybody or to lead everybody when they when they go in, into town and uh, we actually end up towing a few of the wagons with uh, with that uh, with that grip tricks with that electric uh, electric car with a crane yeah and then you've got it looks like some kind of steady cam uh, it's, it, this is a hand mount. We we actually uh, it was a, a shot. We, there's a scene where where Rufus and Wiley are fighting, and uh, we really wanted to get really close to get the lens. It's a really great close scene. to to the, uh, Rufus's hand. Um, and I remember trying and talking about different things. I always um, and I know it's harder, and it's like. A pain for everybody, especially the the rigging crew and and ACs. And but I I, I always think it, it looks better when you you don't go the easy route and use a, a a smaller like sport type camera and try to use the the same sensor for for everything. Sure. So um, uh, Mackie Roberts or Key Grip, uh, he came up with the with this hand brace and some picking points so we can actually rig. The monstro <laughs> to Idris. It's so, so great, yeah. And uh, it's basically like trying to make the camera as light as possible. We didn't even have a, a, a focus motor on because we're we're using a, a 12 mil H series from from Panavision, and and all the accessories were down on the ground or on a backpack, basically. Yeah. But um, I'm glad we did it because it, it worked, and we we did a few other uh, rifle mounts uh, and all sorts of. Uh, um other crazy mounts for for that but um that's why I, I enjoyed like the form factor of the of the monster because it allows you to to do just that yeah and to 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 use the same um larger format sensor sure no, that makes sense well we have another clip this is nat love walking to douglas town a little bit about the what's happening uh why is going into douglas town right now um this is early on at the at the beginning of the of the movie uh in we have uh, uh mary's saloon uh stagecoach mary's saloon in, in douglas town so uh he's he's going to to see mary uh there was a, a very long conversation about how uh, can we make these little towns look different? And and uh, everybody was in, involved in it because it it, it was a, a it, both both of the sets were um, like pretty big for for our department and getting the right approach uh, from everybody was really important. And um, one I think going back to that idea of uh, a photograph printed on glossy paper that was redwood and we we wanted to make it look like a, a, a rich town and and like like really glossy compared to Douglas town which was and I remember when we were talking about it we we, we were we with, with with Martin our production designer and with James the idea was that redwood has a lot of street lights while Douglas town has uh, fire barrels yeah and mud. Well, let's watch it again, and you can tell us a little bit about the scene. And this was—I uh, remember uh, trying to do our best to be there in Magic Hour, and we actually uh, went there. And 
it, it's nothing better than trying to get the available light like one like the sun is like behind like uh, 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 below the horizon um we use that uh, that grip tricks for all these shots for for nets povs and for for leading him into into douglas town um one thing i always try to figure out how to incorporate a steel camera in a scene <laughs> and this was the perfect i think we tried to in incorporate one in redwood but it didn't really work uh, and we end up realizing that we can actually use it here in douglas town we found some references where they were actually doing back then uh pictures of uh dead uh, bad guys in the yeah. casket and printing them and selling them <laughs> it was a strange thing but curious um yeah there, there was the idea that the douglas town will be lit mainly by by fire barrels and whatever lights will come from inside the the businesses or the or the houses compared to redwood that has street lights yeah and we ha actually have a couple of uh behind the scene pictures of redwood it's uh like there. the amount yeah. of street lights we had there kind of allowed us to go really big with with all the the lighting approach and uh that's a pretty big construction crane uh with with a pretty big uh sky panel array on on top of the uh redwood we we had a bunch of other uh, lights at each end of the street and and the side streets. So uh, it, it was a lot. It was quite a lot. Like I remember going through the through the list with with our amazing gaffer J Camp, and I was joking with him. I told him like this is the most amount of lights I think I ever used on a night exterior. But I think it made sense because when you when you use this much light, you you can actually enhance the color saturation. You end up seeing all the colors. Yeah. That was the look that we we wanted to go for, and to, we wanted to to show a big difference uh, between Redwood and, and Douglas Town. Now we're going to talk about the lighting in Mary's saloon, and I wanted to know why James and you decided not to fill the saloon with smoke. It, it was a long conversation, and and we um, we I remember we rehearsed in that space, and then then we we slowly. Uh, saw it kind of come to life and, and all the dressing and, and everything and I remember talking about it I mean th there would have been a very um, good reason to have a lot of smoke because most of the light sources were like gas lamps everybody was smoking in and so on so like our initial approach was like yeah we'll definitely uh, use a lot of smoke but then we realized that uh, the the smoke diminishes the contrast so much that it would have been a totally different look than than our Suddenly. glossy image we wanted. So it, it was kind of a tough choice. And it's not that I love smoke, but when it makes sense, I, I like to use it. So we end up using just a tiny bit deep in the background. Um, and then um, very little. Uh, we we just wanted to create that, that hazy feeling, but not lose the contrast and the glossiness. Um, Lighting wise, what was very interesting because all those, all those practicals were retrofitted with uh, with uh, small tungsten bulbs. Um, I think somewhere around 100, 125 watts, and um, they were ru we were running all of them through a board, so they could uh, simulate mm. the flicker of a, of a gas uh, of, of of a flame. Um, and on the tables, we went with this big. Uh, candles and one reason for it was that that allowed us to hide some small aperture MC lights mm. that can simulate the flicker but like behind the candle on on Matt's table we had one of those with a diffuser and that was our main light source for for both of them it's terrific let's take a look Jeez. So how you plan on taking me in, Marshal? Staring me to death. How about just death? Kiss the pipe. Man. Never known you to touch it. Only out there killing man. 
or before. I was on the trail of the Crimson Hood gang, kind of a bank robbery in Kansas City. Turned out somebody got to him before me. You know, I don't rob banks, Marsha. Bet you robbed them to do, which is all the same to me. Texas. What? I was in Texas at the time of that robbery. How you know when it took place? Whatever. Any bank robbery took place, I was from Texas. Unless, of course, the robbery took place in Texas. Well, I hear it. Some of them boys with the Crimson Hoods, part of a new Rufus Buck gang. That. Rufus and Yuma. Yeah. But you knew that already, didn't you? Now, why are you sitting here monologuing, drinking up my whiskey when you should be out rounding up your little deputies, Marshal? Because he's been pardoned, man. Rufus Buck been absolved of his countless depredations. But seeing as how I've been scouring the terrain looking for bank robbers and such, that particular piece of news fell to reach, man. What they say? Something about guns. Kill it. Mary, why you let that little kid take my gun like that? What kind of stupid rule is that? Should be four guns Shut pointed up, at him. Shut up, Pickett. Ah! Ah! You shoot? He did. You miss. Oh, y'all die. Let's run it again without sound. And I would love for you to talk to us about Mary's Saloon and your collaboration with the production designer, Martin Whist. Um, we, uh, we had some amazing uh, concept art from, from Martin and we, uh, we, we knew the look that, uh, that he wanted to, to achieve. And I remember talking about like the, the curtains for the stage and, and light sources and, and all that. And I think it's, it's one of those I really enjoy having lights built into the set and enough of them. So we were talking about playing like play the placement for, for all those um lanterns and lamps and and um, the candles on the table and everything uh if uh, like we did here where we you can you can hide a, a a small led light behind the candle and use that as our key light like it gives you and and the actors all the freedom in the world for for movement and everything you you're, you don't have to worry about um having shadows on their on their faces like if you do and which we we did quite a few times they they feel natural because they they come from the same direction of the of the candle on the table um it, it, it was an amazing set it, it it was great like and and the fact that you could um just tweak the intensity of the lights that are built into the set and just use just a few uh, augmenting lights uh it's quite amazing because you you get the feeling right away you 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 get ideas from from real fixtures yeah. you know instead yeah. of trying to reinvent and and trying to figure out where where to place yours yeah um and and it was an approach that we had for even for Trudy saloon and for um it, it's quite amazing it, it's a lot of teamwork between both departments between electrics and and art and uh, but it is really amazing, and in, it, it, it can look great when you, when you have, when you know that every single light on the set is, it can, it's, it's run through a, through a dimmer board, and you can change it on the fly. It's, it's quite amazing. Yeah. We're going to switch gears and talk a little bit back about the train. Um, I just was so fascinated with the what do you call it, this motorized slider? <laughs> yeah. And tell us a little bit about, I mean, we, yeah, we've got it up here. So you, it wasn't a set, it was a yeah. real train car. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we were allowed to, to do some changes, like our, our department was allowed to, to create that, uh, that doorway, uh, that little... Um, yeah, we have that picture. Foyer and yep. scene, yeah. And um, it was again an idea that that James had that will we'll have a high angle following them after the, the split screen scene. And um, it was quite interesting because without like having just real train cars and not being able to to take the roof out yeah. or, or, or cut a hole through the roof, 
we had to try to figure out how to do this. Um, when we figured out, we actually end up doing it in the other train car as well, just for, for this shot with, mm -hmm. with, with Cherokee. Um, and uh, it was quite amazing because when you think about it, it's like, yeah, we'll have a, some sort of a dolly track on the ceiling. It's like, okay, that sounds great. How do we actually <laughs> achieve that? <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, again, Mackie, our key grip, found this uh, um, motorized slider that... Um, there are basically a bunch of motorized sliders that you can um, put together and, and create the, the length we wanted. Um, and using like a really low profile remote head and again the red monster just to be able to to be as close to the to the ceiling, that was the 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 perfect tool for, for achieving something like this. And I noticed in the film uh, was the, they did the side by side and then there was reflections. Um, now, how did you shoot those close-ups and, and that part of this uh, um, when we, they start coming we, onto the train? I remember uh, we initially wanted to 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 remove a bunch of walls and um, uh, and cut a hole and use the actual door as our split screen. And um, I remember telling that uh, to James and and he was like, "No, I I really want to to feel it a split screen. I don't want to." um doubt there is like a, a like somehow the camera got in in the wall and you, you could see both of them so we uh we we end up it was a very tight space but i think sometimes when you have that restriction you you come up with uh, yeah. better ideas and one of those um because we 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 we, we couldn't shoot both the general and, and cherokee in the same time uh, we had to find some other shots with B camera, and that reflection in the gun was one of the shots. Beautiful, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's really neat. Well, we have uh, one more clip we get to talk about. So I want to, uh, before you start it, I want to talk you to tell us about Mayville because it's another town. Obviously, it's a very important part, key part yeah. of this. Uh, but what did you guys do to Mayville? Well, it was the, it, it was our third town, and and we we're trying to to find again a different look and um, I don't remember how, how it came but like between Martin and James there was this conversation of making the whole the whole town white and it was great like when I when I saw the the, the art concept and the the town was looking like any other western set um, a lot of wood a lot of dust and and I remember hearing things and 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 like ideas from from everybody and from James and when I when I heard him asking about even like white gravel and white horses I remember laughing for so many <laughs> moments it, it, it came it, it came out great and it was one of those where we we're all talking about it and it, it sounds great and I love uh, going for ideas like like this and uh, then it was the hard moment of like okay let's see how we achieve that in a hard <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the but um, again, with with the help of our of our DAT, and it's it, again, it's it's a lot of teamwork. So if you if you keep your highlights in check, you yeah you you get those amazing things. What's great about this this set itself is like, for example, at the premiere, I remember, uh, and I don't recall any other moment where where a set itself gets applauded by by an audience. No kidding. Well, let's take a look. People they know they follow, people they know they copy, people all up in my grotto. They see me like a genie, try to keep me in a bottle. Catchy, petty people keep them incommunicado. They tie you up in strings and play niggas like pizzicato. What's your real name? Cuffy, my real name. Name I was born with, Cathay Williams. You 
walk worse than your ride, Kathy. Miss Love, my mama always told me to respect my elders, so I'm not gonna say what I'm thinking. That's all right. I can read your mind. Then I'm sorry you had to hear that. We're going to go right back to it. And it would be great if you could tell us some of your challenges in, in the lighting. It's always uh, interesting. I, I mean, I enjoy talking about crazy ideas and trying to figure out uh, um, and getting as many ideas as possible. But then like it's, it get, you get down to, uh, okay, how do we achieve this? And <laughs> I remember this was one of those moments where um, we were on set and trying to, to figure out how much it will actually be able to hold any details in the highlights in the harsh sun in, in New Mexico. Um, one, one, of the, one, of, one of the things that... Uh, it, was, it was very interesting seeing the reactions of the crew members when they stepped onto that set because everybody knew how it was looking before. But uh, just a few people knew how it was actually looking after we painted and dressed and, and every, and just seeing the reactions of, of every crew member on set who didn't see the, the, the set ready was, was quite amazing. Um, we also used um, like our amazing uh, B camera and steady cam operator Dave Camiris. Um, we we use both the DSL, but a lot of times we use the rest, the Red Monster on on his rig, um, because there are so many so many long Steadicam shots, and and he's he's a brilliant operator, and and um, like uh, sometimes you forget how much like the camera moves, and you you barely um, feel the movement itself. It's it's quite amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, so, I have a final question for you. Um, well, two final questions. Um, do you think working so closely with James Samuel in this world of music uh, might inform the way you interpret a script, even without seeing his note? For sure, yeah, yeah. Again, because you you can um, I think because the music can uh, can transmit emotion and can it's 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 another way of communicating um and um it, it's it's like like, like every, everything when when you read the script for the first time you you have uh, your own movie in, in your mind mm -hmm. and then you meet the director more and more and you get notes and you start to understand but I think I think mu music will, will give you that extra information that uh, um, might guide you towards where the director wants to go. The emotion of it. Is there um, like one big takeaway for you from working with James and working on this western? Uh, I mean, it, it, if you think about it now that like we we actually started shooting in in August last year and. Uh, uh, I'm I'm quite amazed that um, we we did it in such a graceful way and like the the crew was so amazing and just just uh, we had we all had to learn a new way of, of shooting sure. movies and, <laughs> but I think somehow that that brought everybody closer together yeah. and um, it, it was it was so so amazing a, a lot a lot of it it's it's um, James's approach and I uh, see. Um, I, I, I enjoy it and I, I kind of have the same, the same philosophy where uh, I think we have the most amazing job in the world so might as well just having fun and <laughs> yeah. leave the drama somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and um, it, it, was, it was amazing. I mean, we had an amazing crew. They, they were working hard, but I don't think we, we felt it because we uh, we really wanted to make this movie, and um, it was it was really really special from so many perspectives. And it does seem like maybe there might be another one. There's a little it, it does. Ending. There were uh, there were a lot of discussions, <laughs> and I think James let, let the the door open for sure. Good. So we'll see where great. we'll see where that goes. 
I sure would watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It has been such a pleasure and just um, really insightful. And thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs>